Okay. Of it. But what are the bands? Okay. The Sanbanta has no hope. monsters, Imamon has no milf. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Madigans are starting, Imamon is on blue coin, has uh, access to some of the round one good cards. We see him lead with the East Red, uh, has uh, access to Iris as well. And we see immediate leader. This is pretty similar to sort of a standard generator list, although instead of going for the shoop, it is the arch griffin chosen instead. Yeah, aiming to say like the order on the griffin, which arrange it to really transfer a lot of boost onto the arch griffin. Here's the temple though. Oh, and we great. see dandelion, which is pretty great if you try to to boost something in your deck. Your heart's pretty good. Uh, Faultus might be the pick here, just because it spawns more units for your Erlen to boost up. It is Gur, Heart Chosen. And Diplomat. Double Faultus. Okay. Pretty good for Forbidden Magic Roll there for some fun to kill off that volunteer. Ah, uh, yes, it, it is Arch Griffin and... Temple actually used on the Arch Griffin, not the Anseis. That's interesting to see, going quite heavy on shuffled back. Yeah, and... <laughs> going up to yeah that's interesting. A lot of points uh, into the carryover already, but yeah. you definitely want to avoid the invocations and toll punishes. So yes. Uh... You definitely want to play to play something like this after your opponent passed. Most we also definitely. see that Revenant has been created by Forbidden Magic, but it was an instant offering, so... Yeah. Yeah. The card is scary, but not that scary. Sanvant is going really tall here, but there isn't a tall punish on the Immamon side of the things. Really, the only sort of tall punish is Anseis, but it's not even boosted right now. So that's not really scary. Um, that that shield is clutch. Uh, uh, Imamon yes. potentially might have wanted to like uh, break it with uh, with the infantry, for example. Yeah. Very nice serve. But copy. now it's not guaranteed. It's also worth noting, Calvi is missing from the hand. There are a few non-tactic specials in the deck here for Sanvanta, notably like the Yenver and the Shuper not tactics. So it's likely that Calvi is one of the top few cards in the deck. But not in hand means you don't get to set up your draws. But uh, Immon was able to draw their Iris's companions, setting up a bit of extra carryover on their side of things. Yeah. We haven't seen Mutual Generator if I'm not mistaken. Or is it just not in this deck? Yeah. Um, let me just recheck uh, pretty fast. No, oh, it's please. not in this deck. It's, it's not in the list yet. Yeah. So going for like all golden offerings and Triss more to get the boost rather than the image generator, which is a bit slow play potential. Yeah. You have this uh, immune Erland, so you can go a card down if you are uh, yeah. using Erland and hide in the, the boost behind the immunity. The problem is Shoop can potentially reach through that immunity multiple yeah. ways for Fish. that uh, charming, uh, destroying and also random damage. So and... Imamon probably wants to keep some of the leader charges, for example, uh, to like, make Shoop uh, less uh, guaranteed. I think the the split damage is probably the scariest because a couple leaders won't really save you from that. Ooh. And we see a pass. The with this pass though is that none of the cards in Immon's hand is able to catch up. You have to spend this Griffin Witch as well as the leader. Yeah, the leader can be used to set up carryover for next round. But with the round being given up by San Banta, it's going to be very hard to get any sort of extra value on this Arch Griffin. You really can't afford to play it in the round two, because that would mean that the Envo can come through. I think the Envo would actually get rid of the boosts, because it's only in the actual text of Arch Griffin it says to keep the boost. But if you want to try and attempt the 2-0, then yeah. That's a possibility, but how big is the Arch Griffin? It shouldn't be that. Yeah. 
which yeah 20 points and some iris boosts on all the units uh, so let's see so full city of course doesn't have the sangreal to synergize with anymore but uh, still replace a tactic uh, and occasionally we see some cute uh, plays with it uh, so yeah especially in a long crown you can even get the the city flip to other side and play a tactic that is not a blue board and we see the push yeah. uh, so imamon just wants uh, that immune erland uh, by round three i guess or maybe even here. Yeah, I, I think depends. it's yeah, probably going all in on the early. Yeah, if you're able to sort of force the opponent to have first play, you're able to protect yourself a bit against some of the shoot mage shenanigans. And then if you're able to, you know, have more than a couple units, it's not very consistent to shoot hunt with a random enemy. Early. Quite a nice full Siri here, disrupting the Volta's pocket. Is there a Reaver Scout synergy? I don't think there's any soldiers to call. Oh, there is Nausicaa somewhere in the deck. Yeah, but that is a uh, bit in the deck. And, I mean, if you are not flipping full city, I, I guess you can transform that uh, if... I ah, know it's an uh, allied units only. Yeah, so it, it would be overpowered if there's an enemy unit. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, actually... I need to update the bracket. Okay. Uh, so we see more hand buffs are being spread this time, not by the offerings, by the all god himself. So five units being buffed, and that means a lot of uh, carry over by now. Sadly for Foltest, he has no bronzes to interact with anymore. Yeah. Also, last chance for Sun Wanter to leader, and we actually are yeah, witnessing to the leader because uh, you might be risking. No, I, uh, you, you cannot click Erland anymore, so I don't think uh, a 2 0 was oh, yeah, uh, that's, that's true. up for grabs, but uh, still, might just not, not risk it. <laughs> Maybe you can uh, keep a good card for, for the later round. And sadly for Imamon, he loses another card here. Yeah, yeah. The leader being used Good essentially round. just to secure that card advantage going into this round three, able to get all the gold top decks that you like. Bring mage here to set up the shoot. Regarding that bracket update, I'm not even sure if uh, if it's meant to be public. I just see oh, actually, yeah, maybe I should. Have but done that. Uh, yeah, no idea. Maybe I let's was just uh, about that. get rid of the. Hopefully, it's. <laughs> I think it's okay, fine. From okay, day one. so there, there is Shoop, of course, for uh, coming from Calvit. Uh, hopefully, there is no. King Slayer now from this uh, runestone, yeah. Otherwise, the Erland was in danger. It's the guaranteed. Uh... However, yeah, no crew this first turn. Sets it up nicely for the offering. Yeah, we probably wanted to mulligan offering uh, with trees, but. Uh, I guess you either sacrifice in the three soul location. Yeah, with the. Instead. It would have ended up boosting by an extra 10 points with uh, how much longer this round would have gone. Yeah. Uh, how concerned is Imamon by the units on his board? He can only generate so many. We see location drop in, so I guess Tris is uh, not getting played. Well, to be fair, the uh, Henry is going to create an extra card in hand. You could also, you might want to shuffle that back, especially since the opponent can choose to give you some kind of brick. You 
Okay, so curse we... scroll is uh, well. There is invocation. There is assassination. That uh, if you try to keep the board clean, but I don't think that's uh, up for grabs. Fawn is uh, interesting to be forced to give over because it, if it gets shuffled back into the deck, it will probably just summon itself, and that helps uh, in the one play around mm -hmm. the shoop here. Yeah. It's so forced. yeah, a fun in here, but uh, well, Tris got uh, her target to shuffle back into the deck. Red of Judgment, not really uh, useful here since uh, Sun Bunch is not Devotion, and uh, the other cards also, I would really say, are very good. Yeah, me literally is not it uh, for Neil God, so we get Viraxis. No, first uh, one, Viraxis sucks. Get? I don't I'm think it's gonna... Thinking. Unless maybe the abduction can pull something with an order. Yeah, but uh, Reens is sadly a bit too expensive. Okay, so our fun goes into the deck. One be the charge is still, and yeah, that also helps with the units on board. But no necessity to pull it out now. Might do it next turn. So are we up for some Shoop show? No. Shoop is going out already. Uh, transform. Okay. Yeah, that's an option. And that's... Yeah. In one play you you, you kind of needed to play it uh, on the same turn. You grab it. Uh, so uh, very... I think, not play by Sunwanter. Yeah, I think that was a bit of, like, yeah, a bit of a mistake by MMO getting about that uh, extra. Yeah, especially with the leader charge uh, yeah. being there. Because I don't think you, okay, maybe was wanting to get the answers with the remaining leader charge, but... <laughs> with the current board state, the answers isn't really doing much more than the go heart. You really just should have played around that, because that did give yourself... Of just an instant lose condition here. I yeah. actually, to be fair, Goha is still decent points along with this. Oh no, Griffin is not the play though. Goha could have been good points along with the Anses, because those don't go too tall in one card when you're up against this opposing Vilgefortz. But uh. I don't think this is going to pay off. Yeah, this is going to pay off though. Wow. Okay, so uh, we promised you some Henry shenanigans. We've seen it. Uh, it's the uh, crazy... It might have been avoided, but... Uh... This Darmation I don't think would have been that amazing. I think maybe you could have created a Henry for. Actually, okay, yeah, that is fair. Still, I don't know if there was really that much. Maybe a Norska for 10 points. I still think it would have been a loss with all those uh, shenanigans, but... Could have been well, a shot yeah, there. So, San Sanvanter read the moves correctly. <laughs> like, uh, you are winning yeah. if you are transforming Erland, uh, and he wait for it. Uh, uh, Imamon could have baited uh, and used the last leader, oh, grabbing something else. Uh, grabbing trees with something else. It's red like an open book. Okay, but uh, GG, and hopefully we'll see that Arch Griffin list again. Yeah. Whilst we're okay. loading into the next game, I back over to a quick look through some of the remaining decks for Immamon. As we saw, the Immamon's Nilf God was banned, so we're not going to see that. We Talked a bit about the jackpot already. We just saw the pincer maneuver in play. The third list for Emmon is this Blaze of Glory Beasts, which has uh, it's quite interesting because it's non devotion, non Renfrey, running. I don't even know what to point out here. Well, obviously a lot of beasts. It has a, a lot of crow messengers, unlike yeah. the standard Renfrey oh, right. list. So mega scopes are there, yeah. and you can end up with like six, seven crows uh, in your graveyard. So yeah. that's a lot of points. Them being four point bodies. Running the Crow's Eye Rhizome along with Double Freya's Blessing, 
yeah, kind of go heavy on those uh, pro messengers. Also, Crow Mother, when you play her, spawns two crows, which works nicely with the axle trap. In terms of control, there's the Seiquan and Heat Wave, but apart from that, it's quite limited. I guess there is a lock from Aquara too. Yeah, and obviously trying to go quite heavy for that. Uh... Actually, wait, there's not even a corrupted Fluminic in this. List. Never mind. That's a uh, very. So it's more on a cross. Yeah. Side. All right. But maybe shouldn't really call it in these tech. All right, so game number two, Sun Venter on Blue Coin with his Harmony list uh, that is running Oak Creator, so I would expect it to be a Devotion one. Yeah, yes. Romancy. <laughs> and Timamon is taking his Arch Griffin. He wants to prove it to us that uh, it's uh, it's a good deck and it can win. Uh, one thing to point out is, of course, Shiro going through the immunity of Erland, so the. The randomness of that Imamon has to deal with and predict what power, like if Shiro would have been in hand at the moment, it would have been at 4 power, but we can see that it's uh, hiding in the deck at the moment. Yeah. But we did see last game, the Erland got quite big, I think it went up to even like a 14 power or something, just as it came into the hand. So, uh, depending on... You might even just be able to get it out of basically any shoe range, especially since you'd expect one of the leader charges to be locked up for the um, Brahin in this harmony list as well. The other thing to play around is also a uh, similar since double backup plan can be a bit of high roll shenanigans again. I hope we don't have a player disconnect here. Yeah, that right? would be kind of sad. But uh, it seems to be back in order, and for now, Imamon is just uh, playing uh, uninteractively. Not I, sure I don't, how much I think, it I don't think it's uninteractive. I think this vial is to set up the Ansei's pool for Insta to kill and kill this Dawn immediately. Yeah. And uh, that's why we see Sanvan to protect him. Because you, yeah, you could use the lock, but uh, with the double sappers, the lock is probably a bit too hard. So yeah, 8 points and says uh, he's uh, struggling to deal with a big Relict. And instead we see a temple here, but uh, when Dana would be disposed of, uh, she yeah. will be already done with her task. I feel like, so... I feel like Temple Turn 1 would have made the Anseis a bit bigger. They, there's no way the Dana could have been With that, the Dana lives another not great pools here though. What did we find? Uh, we saw... Okay, King Demavend isn't bad. Actually, okay, Demavend and Gerhard are good. Just not great pools on the final one where we see the Prophet Lebiota being chosen. Uh, I guess the shields could protect against uh, the uh, bleeding from the very powerful Oak Critters. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, look at those units at uh, 6, 7 power now. Although, yeah, now that uh, the Relict, uh, not Relict, but Elf uh, tag is being on the board. And the end created from the Chameleon, there is, uh, there is much less threat. And only yeah. Beast is buffing at the moment, so... Still though, Imamon doesn't know the hand state of San Vanta. So is uh San says can actually get ahead. If the bio that is going kind of too tall on one person. So. Yeah. This is a bit At safe. At the moment we see very little in terms of carry over being generated on that arch griffin uh... So the deck's game plan is uh, going through some permutations, uh, trying to <laughs> answer the Dana. <laughs> Offensive purify coming through, getting rid of that three vitality. Let's say a uh, nine point sappers, pretty good for a four provision comp. Yeah. Finally, a. Uh, 
deck boost carryover card is played in the form of this Redanian agent. Able to start generating one carryover every two turns. What do you think about this demo event uh, in the deck? It's a bit hurtful, is it I think. Is it officially doing something? With no. Uh, okay, you have one Pella. You use it on like the offering. So yeah, with the Pella, you can get rid of a lock. Um, this being a devotion deck, I guess. Uh, yeah, Brechen <laughs> is the only answer. Look, we saw uh, Nick playing really well against Sunvantis Harmony yesterday, playing uh, only one unit on the opposite row, so the Brehan didn't really uh, get a good target, since there was not enough ways to trigger the Adrenaline three units on a row. He was well, coming through on the Istrid. I believe that is the only lock though, so Pella wouldn't be needed to purify the Dem event here. player are playing pretty fast today. Yeah, with how developed this round is, this uh, Griffin Witcher uh, looking scary, this ranger. Uh, with the two rangers here, could even be an Arch Griffin play, transferring the boost onto the Arch Griffin. You also use the KS yeah, Saren why. to boost the Arch Griffin before you play it to get an even bigger value on that carrier, double dipping on value but it's not really necessary it might still be worth it to just use a leader transfer the boost here with the arch griffin yeah that's a lot of carry over coming from uh what a five p arch cost your leader charge some consistency look, with the draws i don't think you really care about uh getting that say Leviota too much but your leader is under a bit less pressure in this sort of matchup yeah. Seven carryover transferred with the boost, eighteen power arch griffin. That is going to be a twelve boost when the Erland comes. Yeah. That's pretty great, and we see the bird flying back into the deck. Although it's it is getting drawn here, so gonna be Mulligan back into the deck most likely, and yeah, this nice. helps with the consistency as well. On, on a bleed here, you're basically guaranteed to lose your card, but I still think we see a bleed. Just because this deck, Northern Realms, doesn't really gain much going long rounds, doesn't really have that ancient potential. But instead, just trying to force as short a round as possible so the Earl and Carryover is able to reign supreme. Immediate location. Sunvanta says, Okay, if you're going to bleed me hard, fine, here's my scenario. But if you're going to bleed me, you're definitely not getting your card back. Yeah. Okay, so scenario has been bled out, but uh, well, Imamon is happy to see some golds uh, and some power plays out of Sanvanta's hand, but he must be more concerned about his own setup for the round three. So, yeah. He's happy to see, but uh, I think it would have been round to bleed uh, regardless of what Sanvanta is playing out here. Uh, we see the demo event as well. If, if you're not certain you get full value out of the card, might as well dump it here and try to to bleed out more material. Maybe there's a small chance demo event could try to help, but it's gonna be quite difficult. Once this uh, final chapter of the scenario triggers, you get so many harmony procs, it really is insane. So, Brehan is three units on the row, not yes, uh, artifacts do not. artifacts, so... Okay, no roll. Uh, could have rolled a poison technique, but that is not found. Yeah. Goes for the machine. Could have actually gone for a skirmisher if you thought that would help, but... Put anything off or line up the Shiru. I know the Shiru is sort of a six power unit now, because it will... Get three boost your top tags from this scenario. Here comes the demo event, getting the Isis Companions. Actually, pretty good demo event here, acting as another tutor. Yeah. The other two choices were the two offerings, but uh, there's no way the cooldown is going to have enough time to yeah. go through here. 
and also it's kind of not guaranteed to get value against the harmony in, in short round three especially if you expect some of the dana carryover boost uh, will be in there so might as, uh, might as well remove the cards you don't want to draw uh, the point gap is uh, quite large uh, and you gain nothing from playing this <laughs> last card because yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> enough so we're not seeing uh, anything silly like that uh, pass comes when it's bound to pass happens when it's bound to happen and now let's see if the big Erland is enough Erland himself is at seven power which is uh, well safe from Shiro because uh, yeah there, there, there is no scenario on the board and the minor doesn't combine with leader to make it a seven. Actually, the additional supper was mulliganed here, even though there is still the uh, threat of a lot coming out from Imamo. Some banter, not really respecting that. Uh, possibly paying for that lack of respect. Yeah, no more leaks coming from uh, from the Pafko. He will be just uh, just there at five points. So, so how much carryover is there? Of course, Sarge Griffin is thirteen points, uh, but other than that, it's a bit. Not so of course our Erland is doubling that nine points of gear or eight points. Do not fear. Find strength in faith. Priestess is at one charge, so nothing exciting there. So yeah, this year isn't looking great with just one leader charge going to six, but the two boosts from the miner can help set it up at eight power. A Erland. Seven. Looks like it is safe from any ship. Yeah. So do we see instant burn on an eight? I think it has to. Yeah. Holds. Still a pretty big one. Thirty-seven <laughs> points. That's nothing to. Yeah. Sneeze up. Now, that is more and points than the entirety drop. of San Bante's board right now. Yeah. And Brehan's targets uh, not that exciting. And we also see the cute <laughs> block uh, yeah. with, uh, with the boost transfer. So, no Shiro. And a pretty small Brehan. So, Arch Griffin makes it. Uh, yeah. Imamon tried to make it happen from blue coin, although the deck uh, should be loving to play from red because you are just abusing the, the carryover mechanic. But uh, yeah, on the correct coin, although yeah. Imamon knows better, he plays this deck a lot and yeah. gets some great results on ladder with it. Uh, it finds its win, so Arch Griffin is just rising high into the sky for him. Um, I think uh, I'm trying to think back to the round one. Not sure if Sun Vant would have been able to uh, contest that round one a bit longer and win it. But we saw that the getting the round control was really crucial there for MM1 in a deck that doesn't have shenanigans like the Shoop to mess around with the immunity that the Erlen provides. The short round is just way too much for the Harmony to overcome. Especially since they didn't try to like read this scenario or anything later on. Just uh, yeah. fell by the wayside. Yeah, immunity is pretty great mechanic if you are trying to hide a huge amount of points and you just need to queue into devotion deck. They usually struggle. Those Igni players, uh, Curse of Corruption players, are uh, gonna get your own, but uh, devotion, yeah, you love to see that. Okay, into the very game quick queue. It's like the players know what they want to take to the next game. Is the uh, 
I instinctively want to say Beast, but I think it really is more proper to call this a Crow Messenger deck. It's the uh, Crow yeah. Messengers up against the more standard Tube, Erland, and Pumish Generator list. I one Shub deck is already true for Sun Valter. another one comes... Uh... Without much, there is a scroll for Graveyard Punish here, but I don't think there's much uh, other ways to sort of disrupt the Crow Messenger combo. And you do see both the Curse Scroll and the Neomancy available here for consistency. One of them probably going to find the Axel, and uh, once we have the Crow Messenger spawned, these Mega Scopes look quite scary. <laughs> uh... Spicy Serpent. Okay, very spicy servant. We've seen some uh, uh, fortune tellers being added to players' lists yeah. uh, yesterday. Uh, to doom uh, Redanian, to doom Crow Mother. Now, turns out that's a great target to also Maddox might have been fallen victims of that uh, doomed status. Early go hot find is probably taken. Ooh, this Zagoda could be interesting to pick how much control there is. Um, so Drow could be an interesting choice, uh, since yeah. there can be quite a few low-powered units in this beast deck. Philip is a bit more of like a consistent alternative. Yeah, maybe maybe Sun Manter wants to cosplay Imamon and takes the Arch Griffin and starts to play his deck as an Arch Griffin <laughs> deck. Yeah. Doubt that, but you know, that'd no. be some fun. But look DM. at this uh, instead of uh, yeah going for. <laughs> Law friendly Crow's Eye, boosting the Crow's Mother, yeah. getting rid of Doomed. Okay, so when Aeromancy goes, most likely in this scenario. Uh, you have double. No, uh, yeah. The Megascope. And since Sanvanter has played the Temple, has played the Squirrel and Servant, all pretty slow plays. No, the temple hasn't been clicked yet this round. This kind of symbolizes Sun Vanta just wants to pass and get out of the round ASAP. So yeah, he is able to use the temple click straight away in round two and get as big in the Ansays as possible. Okay, so that's three crows, uh, four crows after the second megascope goes through. Uh, and of course double crow messenger still in the deck so that's a lot of carry over and you managed to save your crow mother so yeah. mm. not not an easy task for shoop deck to catch up if uh, if the round two bleed comes uh, you'll have to give uh, way to the unsays uh, hitting the board yeah. most likely or you will be forced to to play Erland, and the beauty of Skellige is that they can replay most of their units from the graveyard multiple <laughs> yes. times. So let's see if Sunwanter decides to... No. Well, Imamon should be pretty much happy about how this went for him, and uh, Sunwanter didn't play Mutant Generator, exactly. might be might be mutagenerating generating in the last yeah. round unless uh, yeah the heat wave is coming its way anyway because uh, it's scary amount of points in a long count uh, if things start hitting the front row and spreading the boost yeah i feel like it's most likely just going to be the heat wave you're trying to yeah. minimize the earn value in that shot Ooh, uh, there we go. No ultimate being played. Crow Mother is staying in the graveyard for now. That's the uh, we use straight away, getting the high big ant. I think this is. Is there is anything the... for on to fight with? Uh. Afro? Like he's a big boy, but uh, there is Look, no. There, there is a Kelpie that. I mean, it's really overkill for a Kelpie, but if the Kelpie was in hand, you probably would want to just kill it immediately with the answer. 
Yeah, Vision Radiant. It's a Mutant Generator as a 9 provision card nowadays. Traits almost equal to the Heat uh, heat Wave, which wouldn't be a story we will be telling like 6 it's months hard. ago. Yeah, it's it was at insane. <laughs> and like, this is the catch. So, How many provisions do Mutant Generator lose? So many Northern Realms decks still play this card. It's, it is absolute insanity to me. Here comes Laser Glory, used to kill off, oh, oh kill off right a bit of course, but giving Sunbound to a few less leaders, in theory makes it harder for Sunbound to find access to their golds. Realistically, the golds that are missing are Sheep and Rodea, who are both neutral, so uh, not as helpful. Block not able to disrupt the bonded. Second half root does come down eight power, and uh, yeah, here's the end six. Amazing. Um, other thing to note is there is still two anglerfish sitting in deck here for Immamon. Because of the sign, could potentially set up some rain, maybe combining with Fukusha to bring them back out. Um, I believe there is also still two Freya's blessings, so you can be pretty confident, I think, using the Fukusha a bit earlier here. No, I, I wouldn't risk it if it mm. was me. Yeah, I probably wouldn't want to. Uh, yeah, I'm unlucky for him. I want to have the half roll locked, otherwise you of course can just combine. I don't know, there, there we have it. And look, Axel is very happy. He's tired of playing the uh, Rhizome over and over. Finally, he has a place where he can just... Uh, train his crows to be messengers uh, pretty mm. good works okay nice roll nice. creating a one point target uh, the the other nice thing about this axle is it did set up these two power crows changing them to four power helps protect against these uh, Kedoni revenants coming down mm. looks like uh, uh there's not much space on maintaining the lead here rain tick will Boss? Question is, do you keep going? I think we still see. Yeah. So, the birds are going out. I think you need to pass next turn unless they want these anglerfish to go back into the deck. And the problem is if Sanvander has to play two cards anyway. Yeah. Uh, they, are, they are leaving the board. Yeah, with the Fakushi gone, I don't think you're getting enough rain with really just this Kelpie and Bride of the Sea. Look, maybe Bride of the Sea resurrecting a uh, Tears of Siren can find the Kelpie to bring them back next round. Sunventer cannot play offensive uh, pact, right? On the Crow Mother. Uh, risks no. is uh, a bit too, too high, but uh, would have been like if he would be some po some 10 15 points ahead, I would have loved it. it yeah, because it really is a 12 point difference using it on an allied unit compared to an enemy unit. So the fishes, fishes are flying away. It's a bit awkward. Needs to be actually no yeah sorry yeah the anglerfish are going away so what without pleasures is life okay okay that's uh, that's an alchemy card yeah <laughs> no, as you said with the anglerfish they're back in deck they do go to the bottom of deck I believe though yeah. so I'm not going to conflict with the draws but the only way to gain rain now is through the kelpie that's only putting rain onto one row however so the anglerfish are not coming back out they are. Oh, hook, line, and sinker. Or oh, that uh, a fairy merchant somehow getting swindled. Okay. Um, okay, there you uh, go. Okay. It, wa it was a 50-50, right? Between the two cards, there was no maxi, no guarantees yeah. of the draw, so... It would be very unlucky for the bottom two cards to both be Freya's mm -hmm. Blessing, but it, it it is possible. So oh, big Erlen carryover uh, didn't happen really, uh, since Mutal Generator uh, was heatwave. A big uh, graveyard carryover from Skellige uh, is uh, 
It's a thing of beauty. Just look at it. Kaka! Um, any problems cool. with uh, with setting up the commander's horn? No, not <laughs> at all. There is even a problem of fitting Kelpie on that yeah, for the uh, extra boosts from commander's horn. Yeah, that that is the problem. Maybe uh, if you you do I think well, you'd rather have the extra crow messenger than having to the space to fit the Kelpie. You're happy to have a full her, right? Um, but yeah, with no shoop, you can't even go for like a shoop thirteen damage or to try to catch this up here. It's just rough. Actually, maybe you should, like grow effects. You could have hoped for a dragon stream. Actually, Erland could be decently it's sized. Like a fourteen point Erland only. Yeah. Uh, and then you cannot lead her for shoop or there, so that's uh, a blow to San Vanter's chances. Uh, would have loved to find those neutrals. Uh, Actually, this is a priestess. Uh, three charges. Only it's, nine uh, points. Not great. Yeah, and you also have to send back uh, the. What was it? Pillar, right? Only one boost. At least it does enable the uh, uh, grace on that Sintry Knight, but. Not a big Erland with that machinery getting heat wave. But the commander's horn comes down, and it looks like that is enough to uh, command Emma on to victory here. Her messengers, yeah. one for one in this series, just gets the win straight away, puts Emma on up onto match point, and uh, now just needs to get a win with the double salamander. Yeah, so ju just uh, a reminder, this is a semi-final game, uh, winner progresses yeah. there and tries to oh, tries to win and qualify for Community Gwent Open number one, but yeah, Imamon is uh, a hero we hopefully deserve, playing some interesting uh, stuff, uh, while Sanvanter also decided to go a bit non-meta with the Shoop uh, list, so... We might have cast it uh, completely different lineups uh, just a week ago with you. Oh, like partially different lineups in top 8. Today we have some spice. Uh, and then some, because, well, how often do we see double salamander in the tournament setting? Not very often. Yeah. Not very often, though. I don't think I've seen it once in, in like, proper qualifier. <laughs> yeah. no, maybe no, in a community tournament. I think tournament. about it, maybe some meme tournament. I might have witnessed it, like, uh, like, but that's not a guarantee. Um, yeah, on so ladder, can... yeah, sure. Yeah, so on the screen I'm just displaying this uh, quite interesting Salaman. Uh, I guess, do you, do you really care that much about spreading the poisons in the round two too much if the salamander is just going to kill everything anyways? Uh, it always becomes a bit awkward with that list because uh, you quite often don't get to double salamander, so you need to either rely on the big uh, uh, Roland getting boosts from all the poisons uh, but yeah i must admit i haven't seen it in action too much i've seen uh, imamon who is a streamer fellow streamer uh tested out on stream a couple of days ago getting some wins against uh, the top of the ladder players even so the deck was uh, not just randomly picked he tested it and his lineup is uh, showing some promise uh, throughout like two days of of the qualifiers. Okay, so how many is known to run poisons uh, itself? So that's uh, that's something you can, but cannot really play around. You are playing quite a few self poison cards. Yeah, it's going to be a bit difficult, I think, for him to win the round one to get the round control here. Yeah, if you try to go for a self poison kind of synergy, well, uh, out comes a dried ranger to make you regret your life choices. Some went are also malignant into the second copy of it, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, two poisons, and uh, yeah. then the three and is there, and then there is a call. I'm not sure if he's playing. Yeah, there is one whisperer as well. So, self poison. 
only good behind defender, but then there is a guerrilla tactic leader to move your defenders potentially. At least he is on uh, for Imamon's uh, from in Imamon's uh, side uh, of uh, you. He is on red coin, so oh well, you get self poisoned and then poisoned by opponent. Uh, and at least you are not losing your uh, not losing on even. But yeah, let's see what he decides to cook up here. A, a bit of a peculiar spot to be in. Playing against poisons. Uh, like what? What is also his proactivity here? I can. Uh, is can fear him? Chemist no, is uh, <laughs> an order unit, so you can just float it, but. Uh, yeah, so I much. don't know if you really want to poison an allied unit, and also what allied unit are you going to play yes. here that is going to be poisonable? Storm Machines in hand, not looking so hot since there isn't really two Salamandra that you're willing to play this round, I think. Uh, Azar and uh, Roland, you really want to save for later. Yeah, killing Chameleon is good enough, uh, so we do see the stolen Nutrigen. You use a 5 provision unit to kill a 4 provision Chameleon. Also, just helps the harmony. That's like such a bad trade, and when you're already struggling, it's uh, just slipping away even further here for anyone to have a chance at contesting. So, what is Sanvanter? Uh, he also missed on the Donna. Oh, decided not to take yeah. her. Dana is also a very, very powerful tool in uh, round 3. The, the problem is the Salamander for you. Like, yeah. You can be buffing your own units, but if you know that they're dying, that's... Uh, be fair. Cool. Like, okay. It's probably fine to just kind of go all in with like the Dana and the scenario in the round 2. If you're able to just force the Salamander out, I think you win the short round with your big bird. Sorry, you have 5 points. It's like Guardian Dusk aspect. <laughs> this deck uh, doesn't run uh, Iago, so all your points are basically concentrated in things like Fallen Ryla, the Blindheim Brothers, yeah. and Salamander. So it's so crucial for the Roland to really stick with that uh, Salamander, because that does enable the Roland to boost itself up to high heavens. Once it over profits, it gets two coins. For every unit poison, and when you're poisoning every unit, oh, that's a lot of coins. Yeah, jackpot do be acting like this with the over profit cards. But yeah, not much uh, <coughs> achieved there by Imamon in round one, but he sees Weeping Willow and Riot Ranger out. So that's some achievement at the very least. Yeah, it is good to at least get two of those poisons ready. Yeah, we still see two poisons. Uh... I don't oh, know. Okay. Recent killer now reads deploy, boost up by one for each poison unit on the battlefield. Did not know that. That was still yeah, some kind of right. horde damage by three. No, no, it's a card that goes into addition uh, as a, as an addition to the mutant buff. Uh, so yeah. People started to consider running that. Uh, you have your immune brother, although Imamon, of course, doesn't have it now. So Gellert is hiding somewhere in the deck with the tu two tutors. Oh no. Can I, I just realized I didn't swap back to Gwent for the first round. At least it was only sure I made that mistake again yesterday. Okay, uh, yeah. I, oh, I guess I can. I guess I can ask ya as. Yeah, oh gosh. But, okay. Uh, okay, sorry for that. Uh, we are on a 20 minute delay. If anyone wants to provide us with the network of uh, YouTube uh, repeats, so uh, we are we are open for offers. But yeah, mistake is gonna be happening. Uh, and yeah, Lemon tries to show you the decks that are being cute, so it makes sense. But uh, oh well, round two. At least you can imagine things, like, guys, it's new, yes. new way to appreciate the Gwent. Yeah, and just... 
listen to the voice lines, listen to casters and imagine things uh, happening on the board. Yeah, it's like it's like we're on a radio, it's like a radio show. Brought to you by Metal Entertainment, a radio show of Gwent qualifiers. Uh, Here comes the uh, Thinless into double look backup plan. The a uh, Brahe uh, Brigade yeah. and Dog Look and a Bomber wiping out that sole unit for MM1. Goodbye to the Roland. Yeah, recognizing what. And uh, that's a 38-point uh, deficit already. <laughs> yeah, and... It's uh, not uh, easy to pick up. And you don't have Renew, you don't have uh, Tutors uh, for the Roland. Yeah, scary yeah. engines. That might, might have been a nice catch-up mechanic of uh, finishing it with the Roland Salamander and then just hoping to find something for a short round. Uh, not available here. And instead you play the Rage Addict. Oh uh, uh, no, this is rough. Uh, although, yeah, we see that Sanvanter doesn't care and instead he might just finish it off. He, he has not poisoned any poisoned unit on Imamon's side of the board. Uh, the thing that uh, you just expect your opponent to play around, I suppose. Interesting pools here, probably trying to compare with what's in hand to maximize the harmony procs. Maybe the cat which could have been nice, but uh, the skirmisher is good here because there isn't another dwarf in hand. You also do wipe out the back alley. Missed. Was it? Kind of... no, Sorry, wretched addict. addict but yeah. Mixing up my Keep old pointing. grizzled. Uh, not the great spot to be in for Imamon. Uh, his poison's also getting purified. Uh, that's basically uh, one of the last offensive poisons that he can play outside yeah. of uh, Salamander itself. Maybe it click the failed experiment. Poison across. Uh, I think there's still like a. Uh, with the three power drives, which could use an offensive poison, so you have to play around that. Yeah, okay, you can uh, just take traffic to kill the Dana, but I don't know where your point is. Otherwise, this looks like a Salaman. Oh, hey. 13. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> And you can transfer a poison on at 11. Uh, yeah, that's. Yeah, uh, what do you do? That, that's combined with uh, the full spent. Could get you there. And you can use your offensive poison. A mutant isn't the worst to play around the offensive poisons because the mutant you poisoned isn't the one with the active counter anymore. So at least it's not that bad. But you're down two cards and uh, I, look, you still have decent cards like Gela, Fallen Railer, Renew for the Salamander. You also don't want to go all in on the mutants if you were going to resurrect that Salamander. Probably better to resurrect the Roland. Okay, nice. so uh, almost a full gold hand, got a tutor, but still a lot of problems, like yeah, sure, you have this defender, and even the king of beggars decided to jump to the correct row, but if Sanvanter needs to go through the defender, leader charges are there. Nice little Gela to help protect that Scarab from death. Not gonna succumb to bleeding. Is it getting poisoned? 
He's answering Gelaf your priority. No. I think it's yeah, you can just force the bleed. Yeah. Means the guy that can't be used to boost whatever M1 wants. Can't really take mission there. Do you see the fallen railer coming down, however? There, sh okay. there should be enough time for the uh, two counters to be used up on the Fallen Railer with Sunvanta being forced to play unit each turn here. Yeah. Okay, so that was the last poison. Uh, Imamon knows that and plays uh, the mutant front row. I feel like this is a bit of a, still a little bit of a mistake though, because yeah, I guess you play around the instant Brayhorn, but if since this uh, scarab should be dealt with, I think even you play the Ciaran, move the mutant that allows the sapper to be used offensively to purify the scarab, that opens up the gorilla tactic through the uh, fallen Rayla. I guess it's fine. I don't know. Do we see the play around? No. Okay. So Gellert here gets uh, gets a lock. There is no renew access. Uh, yeah. Now Fallen Rail is a pretty good spender. You spend three to get five boost if you remove a poison from an allied unit. Uh, this decree is uh, not looking so hot. They're probably just going to have to play the Fist Tech Trafficker uh, if you want to spawn another mutant. It's not bad. You play the Trafficker, spawns another mutant, gives you three points, choose the Fallen Railer order. Uh, but I will be ex Actually, you don't want to do that because Fallen Rail is currently the premier Brahim target. Yeah, okay, so 30 points uh, for Sandvanter, but he has... Uh, he has a 14 point bird in his hand and the Brahim is active and that's uh, barely, but... Uh, a bit more than barely. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's not a 2, 3, 5 point gap, uh, even more. So it's a 10 point win. Point win. And, Although, uh... yeah, looking at uh, the position M1 has been in, I was expecting a bigger gap, but uh, Rayla managed yeah, to, same. to generate some some extra value. Well, Rayla might be a bit underrated, to be honest. Like has a lot of working parts, bit of a confusing card, but can spread a few poisons and having a 3 for 5 spender is also quite nice too. But yes, yeah, so that means we will be going to game 5. I will swap over and I'll, I will really like to swap back this time. <laughs> and if not, chat can just imagine. And, chat can bully me uh, in 20 minutes. <laughs> Uh, and maybe Imam, yeah, Imamon should be streaming as well, so you can catch up. <laughs> if anything goes wrong, you can uh, watch the games on his yeah. channel. So we are thankful to all the players uh, going live with the tournament, keeping the tournament spirit alive. Uh, so I know. It's nice to have. Final deck here for Sunvanta is the standard Shoop Erlen Pinova. And of course, MM1 is going to have to try again with the double Salamander going into game five. Winner will proceed to the upper bracket final, where they only need to win one more game to get their place in the community going open. The loser will go down to the lower bracket final. It's not over for them, but it is a bit of a harder path where they'll need to get two wins in the lower bracket. And no more second chances at that point. But uh, yeah, to be Gwent Open number one lineup for the March 16th. So some exciting games are coming there as well. Okay, so 
We know the decks, uh, we know main strategies, uh, but uh, let's see how players are finding their cards. We do see Temple, no Mutual Generator for, uh, at the moment for Sun Hunter. And I'm not even sure what is the perfect uh, hand for Imamon. I don't know, at, at least what you can... You can freely use your bronze poisons here, which is why we see the girl that coming down, I'll expect. Wretched Addict's basically a witch apprentice, um, once you're able to secure poisons. Uh, I don't know why we are rewarding players for giving drugs to a Wretched Addict, but uh, yeah, you get a really good engine if you fulfill the addiction. Um, so we don't see a play around... Uh... Shoop opener, yeah. poten potential shoop opener, uh, there would have been a random damage and Gellert is the, really uh, around one star of this deck I suppose, spreading it, uh, the poison to the wretched addicts and also mutant that can be combined, although we do see uh, boiling oil that can achieve more than just killing one unit, uh, purifying Poison from an engine will be yes. devastating as well. An event that could... engine. Uh, Roche, maybe? Roche can kill a Scarab if it's not boosted. Yes, that's fine. Yeah, I don't think these and are Campbell amazing. Campbell continues to offer the Arch Griffin to San Juan, yeah. which I find extreme, extremely funny in this series. Yeah, it is Philippa, uh, Queen Adelia, and actually does take the Arch Griffin. So, yeah, that's a bit of a surprise to me. But yeah, these wretched addicts doing, uh, putting a lot of work in, more than I would expect. And uh, actually, San Vance going for the Arch Griffin. Not even going for a big Ansace to answer these wretched addicts. This is looking very hard for San Vance to contest this round right now. So this positioning of Gellert uh, at 5 power, perfectly for boiling yeah. oil, is uh, kind of interesting. Adrenaline yeah. 6 is uh, happening right about now. Yes, there's the purifier. So it has to be. Go. Definitely should have at least played Gellert on, on one end. Throw so you don't purify both wretched addicts. Suddenly it's looking a lot better for San Vanta. And we didn't even comment about the Reaver Hunters coming through from the Rune Mage, which is basically a two-point engine in and of themselves right now. Yeah, but there are uh, only two of them. Yeah. But uh, truth be told, uh, it's, uh, it's watch. The, yeah. Quite a few turns by now. Yeah, and I, I like this Pella, helping this wretched addict work through this addiction. Actually, uh, being a quite uh, moral supporter, I'd say. But quite nice strong mutagens. The nice thing about mutants generating is it does give you double salamandra quite easily. It's able to not only get the four damage, but also help poison another wretched addict. Yeah. Imagine how much easier it would have been to secure this round if the Gela was just on one side of this front row. Yeah. Uh, so Sanvanter uh, kind of starts to run out of place, like uh, 15 point Arch Griffin is uh, doing something, but other than that you'll have to dig into your deck for for some more expensive cards than uh, those four provision cards he has in hand, so you need to calculate, uh, eh, although goes for now, still goes, and also nice whale on this uh, Redanian uh, agent, uh, denying a poison. We do see a Neuromancy here. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, okay, so Rich Addicts are uh, back at it. Don't do drugs, guys. I mean, well, do do drugs if you play uh, double Salamander. <laughs> That's how you win round one here for MMO. <laughs> I really don't know what kind of message we're sending out to the audience here. It's probably not the right. I'll try to reiterate, uh, don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> probably that should be the message. Okay. Yes, okay. Mo moving on. Don't do drugs. 
<laughs> Ooh, you know, um, okay. Okay, so uh, to... if you if you plan to push or do something yeah. in this round two, KOB in hand probably oh, there... just cancels those plans. And yeah, the double salamandre is more than happy to see a long round out. Uh, yeah, especially when you have last say. Like, that's a huge difference maker. Opponent going before you gives you more chances to kill the units with all those that... poisons that you're spreading. That Philippa is annoying to see as your defenders uh, potentially fall, fall in prey to that. So, kind of need to find your candle. There is Shoop. Okay, long round at least, this uh, shoop list is able to make use of the Muse Generator, able to boost uh, a bunch of the units in the deck, and then uh, get that value with the Erland. But, uh, trying to think here, I, but we might need to see a, I think a shoop transform play is probably the win condition for San Vanti. Uh, Shook Transform again, uh, not the first time we're witnessing it uh, in this series, but also on a game, uh, bigger scale. It was also the the play for Erland decks against Pirates with Curse of Corruption, so Shook to the rescue. Was there a Rune Mage play? Yeah, right, from the Rune Mage game, the River Hunters. Uh, there was, the, yeah. The guarantee, guarantee Trolls, so no RNG there. I'd say this is only at four power. I don't. I guess you can save the Squire click to boost the Ansys. That's probably the best way to deal with this Roland as he comes. So. Erlando comes to hand. Uh, Scout might be the one out. Yeah. Uh, what is this? Okay, Adalia was roped. Okay, and Scout was staying in the hand. It's not the worst because you can but use one a... squire into a second squire, and that the other squire can be Ansays. Or just both yeah. use them. Yeah, you know that your opponent. Uh, Killing things slowly through poison, so you can float. Philippa is being played around, uh, a lot of spending. Uh, yeah, so yeah, the you can see what the temple pulled, so plays around the Philippa, they're pretty good Philippa, being able to kill one of the salamanders, uh, salamander scarabs. Mm -hmm. but I don't really see, uh, actually Scout can move the other one to the other row. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm curious if we'll see Scout and if that was the reason to keep yeah. it, because, well, the card is uh, I mean, super slow, but... Definitely do. Need, uh... I think it's... that's the play to be able to kill out the uh, Roland Blindhunt. Yeah. Okay, no, nothing you can do. The... Payroll specialist is not on Salamandra's hideout, although they probably need to to hire him as well, <laughs> so that you can move stuff around. Yeah. Yeah. Instead, uh, we probably do see the uh, yeah hideout coming down this turn, and I'm really interested to see the sequencing of these last three cards for Immamon. Because ideally, you want to use the Salamander after the Erland comes out, right? Because you don't want the super big Erland going yeah. through. Um, especially with the Mish Generator and the Arch Griffin all sticking throughout this round. That is quite scary. 
But if you do that, if you try to save the Salamander and the Renew, well, we saw what happened to the Arch Griffin, and uh, yeah, I wonder if MMON is uh, worried about a repeat appearance. Although you cannot really finish with the Erland, so... Yeah. Actually, that's true. It's true. That, that's the problem with not having the the flexibility on that shoop. So, but yeah, Imamon uh, should have learned his lesson. So, there yeah, is uh, Salam a uh, mutant killer on the right side. It is a pretty good cut uh, in, into this board after one salamander. But, I think you uh, are correct. The Imamon would be able to save it. Okay. Yeah, and with that in mind, Sanbanta, as you said, is forced to. Okay, never mind. Just uh, go for a shoot block. Right? Okay. Salamander hideout is on the board already, so there is no access to purify. Otherwise, you could have gone for that. Um. So. Anything to play around, uh, shoop out, Philippa out, uh, there is nothing too good for the Tradea, and the Onsays is, uh, or Zenvanter's Onsays is basically fighting whatever the tallest unit is, uh, and there are no threats to answer, and those can be hidden behind the defender anyway. Yeah, I think. So, You're fine to just toss out the mutant killer to a... I, I don't see any way for Sunvan to, to disrupt the double salamander. Yeah, it's a sad one, but... Uh, and the double salamander is your winning play. Is there... You have the on six, do you? Yeah, there are, there is a bunch of salamander however, on boards. However, it might be fine for Sunvanta. Because this Cursed Knight was kept, um, it can be used, or I mean, you still have it as an option from deck still. And I think it makes more sense to keep the boost on Cursed Knight, since this Erland will probably be dying anyways. You can use the Cursed Knight to, I think, save the Shoot Knight from the double Shoot Salamander Poison. poison it's actually, no, no, it's gonna die now. So yeah, be the next tallest unit that is saved. There we go. Salamander goes behind the defender, but uh, that's not saving it from its uh, yes. fate of being poisoned. Uh, you cannot uh, purify Erland by any means. Uh, before you could have uh, boiling oil yourself some years ago. Nowadays, boiling oil is just enemy units. Yeah. One though, already used uh, though. As a ship, you can't have any duplicates. What is this play to try to make it up? Is, I guess it is the Arch Group. No, it's. Okay, the 8 point Cursed Knight coming through, able to save the uh, 4 point Bronx. I'd still expect. Yeah, Arch Griffin, I guess, would have been dying to the poison from Salamander yeah. and then failed experiment. Uh, although, there is Actually, not enough money for Quite that. Anymore. There are no coins anymore outside of, like, you're not getting any any extra since the Roland is. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. Once the uh, ending. Of course, there are one two three four five six salamandras on the board and uh, wait the salamander itself has one profit yes it does okay I now. 50 point erland 50 point erland uh, <laughs> halfway to a solid 100 points on one unit not exactly that but uh Okay, so Salamander is on the board. Uh, the squirrel has been played around. Yeah. Otherwise, if, if you insta poisoned, uh, uh, that, that is might true. have been a problem. 
On to the uh, emo. I wonder if that's out of confidence or out of uh, fear. Yes, it is time we see which it is. Uh, a lot of poisoned units. Uh, also, I hope that wasn't. Yeah. The tribute is getting paid. Everything is dying, but too many things are dying on Imamon's side, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Well, you just witnessed it in the semi-final of right. the qualifier. The double salamandro making the, the final input of the game. Impressive. I can't. That is, uh, yeah, that is insane. Uh, played that much up very well in the macro, securing the win in round one and then getting the double salamander through in that round.